<sighs> you ever just want to fix something? <laughs> I've got a uh, quarter of a bag of pepperoncini chips, a bit, bit of hazelnut water, and a Mackie 1202 VLZ3 that does not power on, as you can see from the sticker. It's about what I paid for it. Let's see if we can get a satisfying rip. Nope. Anyway, uh, hopefully this will just be the capacitor plague. Uh, so sit down and have a nice, uh, a nice evening of a little light troubleshooting. Hopefully. So let's verify the complaint. I haven't tried this before. Powered on. No sign of life. Uh, I have checked the fuse. It is good. And we are in. No horrible skid mark. Usually designed to discharge themselves as soon as power is disconnected, but of course if something is faulty, you don't know if the safety systems are working. Turn this on again. Okay, no sign of life as expected. And I'm just going to probe around and look for, for voltages. I mean, if there's no AC going into this thing, right? What's the point? Ooh, I smell something warm. Oh yeah, I definitely smell something warm. Never mind. What's up with that? So this LM317 is really, well, it's pretty darn hot for just having been on for a second, and so is this LM337. They're both quite warm, so I don't know what's up with that. So I suspect there may be a short, actually. 54 volts! <laughs> now I'm scared again. See, this is why you check. Uh, maybe that's for the phantom power for the um, microphones. It's got these pain in the butt direct wiring connectors, so you can't easily uh, unplug this. But uh, I'm going to take these screws out so I can at least look at them. It looks like a very simple power supply. You've just got an LM317, an LM337. Uh, I believe that's a adjustable um, linear regulator, positive voltage, and this is probably negative. Uh, generate a plus 16 volt uh, rail up here and then down here there's the negative LM337 uh, that does the exact same thing it generates a minus 16 volt uh, rail. Now uh, this uh, black wire here uh, as you can see it goes all the way through uh, and then uh, goes to a, a ground point and I've determined that this this uh, wire here um, is is this node here. So here's ground, <clears throat> and uh, this pin here is where the black wire of the transformer would connect. As you can see, I've got about um, lead resistance. Uh, but if we start checking the outputs, so the output of the LM317 is pin 2, which would be the middle one. So let's test that. It's 2.5 ohms, which is about the resistance of these leads. Very suspicious. Let's test the, um, let's test the same thing in reverse, just to rule out any weird diode effects. And if anything, it's a little... Uh, lower resistance. Now let's check the output of the LM337 which is on pin 3. This one's 5 ohms. Let's do that again. Other direction. Now it's reading 2 ohms. So very suspicious. Um, 
and though I wasn't shorting to this, I had this uh, out, out of shot on my uh, table and it was doing the same thing. Um, so I have a reasonable suspicion that uh, there is a short. Now, what could it be? Well, not much on this actual power supply board, unfortunately, because if you look, yeah, that diode could be shorted, but to short it to ground, you'd also have to have either a shorted resistor or a shorted capacitor here, um, and I just I just don't see it. Maybe this capacitor is shorted, but again, it seems unlikely. Um, and there's no obvious like solder blobs, and it would have to short out both both rails. So I think there's something bad going going on here in the uh, uh, in the actual uh, boards themselves. Hopefully, it's just a couple shorted tantalums, um, but uh, but we won't know until we look. So I think the next thing to do, unfortunately, is to take out. Uh, this board here and just see if we can disconnect it from uh, this board or what's going on so just give me a moment I will do that I think if you look right in there you might see that there's a bunch of just uninsulated jumper wires just connecting this top board to this bottom board like a couple dozen of them I don't know if you can see that yeah right here eh. Yeah, like where my thumb is, look at all those, they go all the way down. Um, so there's no way in heck that I'll ever be able to unsolder those and get it back together without taking out the entire two boards, which means taking off all those knobs. Uh, so <laughs> uh, nice chill evening, they said. Okay. Well, I think we should abandon that approach for the moment, desolder the power supply, this one, um, just remove all of those, um, and then just bench test the supply. Well, I have some pretty good news actually. Um, so as you can see, I've liberated the power supply, um, and the short is still present here. Um, if we uh, measure the uh, plus and minus 16 volt rails with respect to uh, earth ground uh, we get, well not earth ground, but circuit ground, signal return, not sure. Uh, we still get the uh, the short um, and also more um, maybe conclusively I've uh, created a little bipolar supply here um, using my uh, dual power supply. And if I turn it on uh, both rails are at zero but as soon as I turn up uh, one of the rails you can see the current shoots up to the limit and same thing with this one so yeah I think there's a short on this board so I'm gonna take out both of those regulators uh, see if I have a replacement and uh, put those in I figured it out. Well, I figured something out. Um, spoilers. <laughs> so these two caps are these. These 47 microfarad 25 volt. And they're just the output filter caps on the output of uh, both um, the linear voltage regulators. And if we take our trusty multimeter and measure across them, Dead short? Dead short. So both these caps made by JH CD110. Um, oh, just dropped that, doesn't matter, it's trash. Incidentally, if you don't have one of these, um, these are amazing for um, this kind of work. Get it in a shot here. It's a little. Um, it's a little bottle, you can put whatever you want in it. I have isopropyl, and when you push the top down, a little bit of uh, fresh uh, liquid comes up. So, 
and it has a little lid if you want to push down without it splashing everywhere or prevent it from evaporating and so it's uh, excellent for uh, little jobs like this so clean off that old thermal compound I've uh, grabbed the power supply by the ear <laughs> and let's test the voltage rails one last time yeah, they had quite a tangle. Okay, both rails are drawing um, minimum power, so that's good. Let's try the minus 16. Looks good. And the plus 16. Okay, sorry for the really terrible camera angles. Throughout all this, I'm uh, not super well set up. I think I'll stick this sticky note maybe underneath here so that when I open this again in <laughs> three weeks when all the other caps fail, um, I'll remember what I did. Well, <laughs> it shows a power LED. That's good. Getting weird smells out of this. It smells like burning rubber. Oof. The uh, negative rail is still unhappy. Ah, well, I'm left to um, ponder my fate. Can see in there <laughs> at least a dozen of the same kind of form factor capacitor. So I guess it's time to do. Oof. Uh, maybe 70 caps? No, I'll think about that and I'll do a flyby of the board. How about that? Alright, so I uh, stared at the circuit diagram. I uh, metered out all of the capacitors that I could find and um, by process of elimination uh, helped by desoldering the uh, ground point uh, up here uh, to isolate these two boards I determined that the problem was on this lower board and uh, the minus 16 volt rail uh, comes down here and as you might notice uh, this capacitor here is a different color <sighs> The original one was also shorted, so I think I've measured out the rails and um, I don't know, they seem good. Now of course the question is, can I get this meter to do anything? If I power this thing up now, it seems to work, sort of. Can you hear that? We do have sound out, and I can control the level with the um, uh, with individual channel uh, faders, as well as the uh, main mix and the sub mix controls. But I don't get any output from the uh, main outs at all, uh, nor do I get any activity from the um, from the VU meters. Um, 3.28 a.m. Y'all, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> and let's turn on Solo. What do you see? Activity. Um, most of it was my fault. <laughs> 
as these things go, of course. Um, what ended up happening was, as I was doing a bunch of testing, trying to get uh, all of this to work, I broke a few of these wires, um, but they remained in place, and so I couldn't tell from a visual inspection, so I'd get very intermittent results that kind of befuddled the whole testing effort. And you really should have used a normal, you know, little ribbon cable for this, but hey, whatever. Um, so that accounted for several hours of uh, mistaken debugging. Um, but the real problem was over here. Um, I replaced one of those shorted out caps, but I'd inadvertently um, pulled out the uh, through plating uh, on the via or the pad um, for the negative connection of this capacitor. And what this means is that um, I soldered in the new capacitor, it looked like I had good contact and a good uh, fillet, but the top of the board was not connected. There was actually three wires coming off of that pad, two on the top of the board and one on the bottom. And the top two were not connected. Uh, and that meant that this entire area of the board did not have a full supply rail uh, of plus and minus 16. But I didn't notice this um, because there was a partial rail. Um, there's a very odd circuit um, at play here. So this is the power supply circuit for, the, for that um, VU meter. And you can see that there's plus and minus 16 volts, but it goes through a couple of resistors. And that really threw me for a loop, especially because in this model, uh, apparently um, two of those resistors were replaced by this uh, inductor. Um, so I was kind of chasing a red herring down a rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, it works now. So I think the moral of the story is um, don't take your repairs for granted. Uh, and if you don't have the exact schematic for your device, this is for a different a uh, slightly different version of the product, um, I guess. Don't um, don't take a surface similarity to be uh, in an indication that the entire rest of the circuit uh, 